everyone this is Arun Sharma from Microsoft and today we'll be talking about nonlinear dynamic soil structure interaction analysis in Microsoft and this is what we'll be covering today I'll be talking about the new development for dynamic soil structure interaction in Microsoft and uh, for this we had two main developments one is uh, general spring support where we have coupled the stiffness matrix with mass and damping matrix it's a 6 by 6 couple matrix and I'll be covering its feature its advantage its benefit and uh, using some evidence mod uh, models to convince you then uh, we have uh, the second development as inelastic hinge properties uh, where we have uh, developed multi-linear type of links and in that we have covered two types of links elastic uh, multilinear and uh, plastic kinematic multilinear links and again I'll be covering its feature advantage and benefits So let's start with the general spring support. So first uh, let me discuss about its features. Basically in this uh, feature, in this uh, development we have developed a couple 6x6 spring as you can see here. So we initially had stiffness matrix along with this now we have included mass matrix and damping matrix which you can uh, enter in, in this format and the related analysis function with this new features are eigenvalue analysis fully supported, response spectrum analysis, linear time history and non-linear time history analysis is, are fully supported with this feature. And how to apply uh, this general spring support uh, is that uh, along with response spectrum analysis when damping is to be considered we must use strain energy damping and with linear and nonlinear analysis we have two type of analysis method model and direct integration and there also exists a third type which is uh, static but uh, we will not be talking about it uh, here so in analysis uh, method if uh, we have selected model then we must select the damping method as damping because then based on the model analysis the damping will be considered when we choose direct integration then the damping method should be either uh, mass and stiffness proportional or element mass and stiffness proportional in this uh, under these two types of uh, uh, damping the damping matrix that you have entered will be considered and if you choose uh, strain energy damping then uh, based on the modal analysis uh, the damping method will be considered based on modes so this is the feature now what are its advantages? So as you can see here, uh, we can uh, the main advantage of this uh, feature will be observed when you are doing a global analysis. And here you can see uh, when you have, uh, especially for long bridges where there are multiple pair and under uh, each pair there are several piles then it becomes uh, virtually impossible to uh, uh, do the analysis with all the piles model with the uh, soil strata with nonlinear springs and everything uh, put into one model the uh, the disadvantage of uh, modeling in this scenario in this situation is in this manner is that the model si uh, size increases uh, to an extent that it becomes unmanageable by several software and uh, the analysis time increases and even after the analysis we get results uh, the result volume is so big uh, that you cannot uh, handle that and uh, extract the results what you need so to overcome this kind of uh, limitation uh, what we have done is we have generated this general spring support which can replace the entire assembly with the piles and the footing there with one spring support and this spring support will have three matrices mass, stiffness and damping 
and uh, how to convert the uh, the uh, the uh, pile foundation to uh, the relevant matrices of uh, mass and uh, damping that we will cover in the subsequent webinars. But today what we'll be talking about is we have already converted them into these uh, three matrices and how we'll apply them and uh, do the simulation. So the advantage is for global analysis you can simulate complete foundation behavior considering soil structure interaction with just one general spring support under each pier. So the benefits as you can directly relate uh, from your experience of, of uh, long span bridges or uh, group pile footing, it is a time saving tool. It will cut down your analysis time, it will cut down your modeling time, it will cut down the result extraction time to, uh, to such an extent that uh, uh, you will have, uh, you will save uh, valuable man hours in here. Then it's a significant boost for, uh, for seismic analysis because such kind of analysis is very critical uh, when you are working in a seismically active zone. And you need not to make any more compromises on the accuracy of uh, superstructure behavior uh, under seismic events because now you can uh, uh, just, uh, what I mean in the past what we used to do without this feature is that we used to have a, either a fixed support at the base of the pier or uh, we used to model uh, uh, simulate the entire group of pile by replacing them in one group of pile and trying to approximate the behavior of uh, springs all along the pi uh, pile. But now what you can do is simulate the entire uh, uh, footing or the foundation behavior with one uh, support and take into account the dynamic effects of uh, uh, damping and the mass effects into the same support. So uh, you not, need not make any more uh, approximations for this kind of uh, analysis and uh, the best uh, uh, part of this uh, feature will, is that geotechnical engineers provide you direct, directly provide you the 6 by 6 metrics and then uh, many times you face a problem that uh, where to enter these data and how, in what manner you should uh, enter this. So the data entry is made very simple. You can directly punch in the uh, numbers as you obtain from the uh, geotechnical engineers and do the analysis. Thus it will make your entire work process and uh, work sharing between different departments uh, quite efficient. Now to uh, simulate this uh, uh, behavior I'll use a very simple example where you can see it's just a single uh, you can call it let's say it's a uh, peer and at the base of the pier we have a, gen a general spring support and at the top we have applied mass and we will apply a kinematic motion uh, uh, at uh, uh, to this uh, structure and then see the behavior. With the support we have applied uh, stiffness, mass and damping matrix and as a result if you uh, I have plotted the uh, uh, displacement of the top of the uh, of the pier against time and you can see the damping effect coming to picture as uh, as uh, time proceeds. So in this manner uh, you can uh, verify very easily whether and how the uh, the support and the springs uh, with the uh, different type of matrices is behaving. To exemplify this uh, I'll go into the program itself and open a template file that I have So in this template file I have predefined a material in a section. You can just right click and go to its properties to see the material properties. I have applied a zero weight density material because I am applying the entire mass at the top uh, as a uh, nodal mass. And if you want to see the column section, you can just see it's a 60 inch uh, wide solid, uh, solid round section. So what I'll do is uh, quickly create a node, right click nodes and create node. I'll create one node at the origin, click apply and then right click 
go to elements and select extrude and now I'll select that particular node extrude from node to line element of concrete material and column section and it is 20 feet high so I'll enter the height as 240 inches and then click apply and I'll use zoom fit so that you can see the entire column uh, erected here now I'll click close and now having done this I'll apply the mass at the top of this uh, column so right click or rather I can go to model and select masses and select nodal masses now I'll use single select tool and select the node at the top and enter the mass value as 6250 pounds per uh, pounds per uh, gravity unit I'll apply equal mass in all three directions and then click apply and this symbol notifies that the mass has been applied at the top and since it has uh, have been applied in the MX, MY and MZ direction so therefore we have half of the uh, this hexagon is red and the remaining half is black I'll close this and now I'll go ahead and apply the general uh, spring support so for this I'll right click go to boundaries and go to gen uh, define general spring type and here I'll enter the name as foundation and as you can see this is a stiffness matrix I if I check on mass matrix then I can consider stiffness and mass matrix and if I check on damping matrix then I can, I can consider stiffness mass and damping matrix together so for stiffness matrix I'll enter the data along the diagonal now here I'm considering a very simple uh, scenario so therefore I have uh, limited the use of this uh, feature just for the diagonal matrix but for the real scenario you can always go ahead and enter data for the other columns as well uh, and especially for vertical piles you'll have this the diagonal values if, if they are battered piles or tapered piles uh, you you can uh, enter the values in the other column as well I mean you have to enter the volume uh, value values in the other columns and while converting the entire group of piles and the footing into stiffness, mass and damping matrix, uh, these values will come into picture based on the arrangement of the uh, piles as well. So uh, as I mentioned, if the piles are battered, then you will have uh, some values in, the no in, this, uh, uh, in the other columns. It will no, no longer be just uh, uh, along the diagonal values. Having done this, I'll move on to the mass uh, matrix and enter the data for this diagonal. and if you are uh, wondering from where did we get these values then uh, we'll be covering this kind of uh, 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 exercise and, and uh, show you how to convert from different uh, arrangements uh, into different type of metrics in the subsequent webinar so don't worry about it right now we'll be covering it uh, later on but I'm pretty sure uh, the geotechnical engineers must be aware of uh, these kinds of tools 
and because they provide the data in this 6x6 matrix format that you can directly make use of. Then I'll click add and we have defined the general link with the, the uh, stiffness and the mass and the damping matrix. Then I can click close here and then right click, go to boundaries and select general spring support. And now I'll use single select and select the node at which I want to apply the support. And as you can see we have considered uh, the general spring type as foundation. And we have entered the stiffness matrix, the mass and the damping matrix and then I'll, I can click apply. You can have different type of uh, uh, general spring types. It is just one that I'm, I'm simulating. Let's say for uh, under different pile, uh, under different pier there are different pile arrangements and different uh, soil strata. So you will have different type of uh, springs generated at, under different pier. So you can just select what kind of uh, spring you want to apply or support you want to apply under which column. Then, then just select that uh, node and then click apply and you'll get a yellow colored uh, hexagon that will show that uh, it has applied the stiffness matrix on X, Y, Z for displacement and rotation are X, Y and Z. And you can see here mass and damping are considered. Then I'll close this and now I'll move on to define the uh, time history or the kinematic motion by using time history on the structure. So I'll go to load and go to time history analysis data and here I'll you know, select time history load cases. I'll click add and enter the name let's say TH for time history nonlinear type with direct integration and as I mentioned here you can enter the time as let's say 60 seconds the uh, step increment for output is 1 and time increment is 0 uh, 0 0.01 and as I have uh, sh I had shown in the previous uh, webinars I mean I think in the last uh, month series when we covered the uh, inelastic time history analysis I mentioned how you have to select these time increments so you do a preliminary analysis you find the uh, period of the um, or, or the natural period of the member and then divide take one tenth of it and this increment should be less than that value or one tenth of the uh, or whichever is uh, lesser. Then uh, considering the damping method you can choose from model as I showed you earlier in the presentation. It can be model mass uh, stiffness proportional, strain energy proportional or if element mass or stiffness proportional. So if you choose mass and stiffness proportional or element mass or stiffness proportional then basically the uh, the damping uh, uh, that you have defined along with that uh, nonlinear boundary will be considered. And then I'll click OK here. And also I'll define the eigenvalue analysis. So I'll click on eigenvalue analysis control. And here I can enter the number of frequencies as let's say 10. And the uh, and type of analysis is line shows. And then I'll click OK and close. Now having done this, uh, I'll go ahead and define the time forcing function. So right click, load, time history analysis data, time forcing functions. I'll click add time forcing function and then click on earthquake data and here you can choose from more than 50 built-in earthquake records as seen here. I'll choose uh, 940, 1940 El Centro site and then click OK. So you can see the earthquake record right here and then I'll click OK Then close here. Then right click again. Now you will specify how this uh, time forcing function will be applied to the structure under what kind of time history load K. So you can go to ground acceleration now and select the time history load case and select the time forcing function that will be applied and it will be applied in which direction. Let's say X direction and then click add. 
you can consider multiple time forcing functions uh, to be applied in the same time history load case in different directions and you can choose the angle of excitation also so it can be along the global XYZ axis by 0 degree or 90 degree basically this angle is from global X axis in the XY plane then I'll click close here and also let me uh, define the time history result function so that you can uh, see some plots so I'll go to graph and under displacement velocity acceleration I'll click add new graph and I'll enter the name as column top and then I'll select the node number as number two so I'll just directly go and click on that uh, node and the reference point for this uh, nodes displacement uh, can be either ground or you can consider uh, to uh, in the program to add the ground motion as well or you can specify this uh, displacement to be plotted with respect to any other node you want so the relative displacement can be plotted in this software then you can uh, consider the time forcing function or the sorry the time history load case for which you want to consider the uh, displacement for then click OK and close and now we are good to perform analysis so I'll just hit analysis and here in the message window you can see the iterations being performed and it took about uh, 6.5 seconds to complete this analysis and now we can see the results so let's start with the vibration mode shapes and the uh, period and natural frequency so first let's see the mode 1 I'll check on legend so you can see the uh, natural period you can see the percentage of almost 99 percent in the first itself mass participation and then you can click on the button with three dots to generate the table so here you can see mass participation is uh, for x-axis y-axis and z-axis and you can also see the frequency and the period now let me go and show the time history graph so I'll go to time history result time history graph and I can select the function that I just created and I'll add it on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis I'll keep time and I'll enter the graph title as column top displacement for the time history load case that I've defined I'll have the decimal points on x and y axis as one and then I'll click on graph and this is what the program generates so you can see the damping effect coming into picture so this is how you can uh, simulate the soil structure interaction and uh, uh, model the entire uh, uh, footing or the foundation with pile and the pile uh, cap and replace it uh, with just one general uh, soil spring support and consider uh, the 6 by 6 couple metrics for mass and damping along with stiffness. Now let me continue with the presentation here to cover the second development of my receiver for soil structure interaction. The second development as you can see is the inelastic hinge properties and for this we have multilinear links for elastic and plastic kinematic behavior and for multilinear elastic link we have just one uh, model and uh, uh, and there will be no hysteresis loop provided because it is an elastic behavior but for plastic behavior we have three models and uh, we have provided the hysteresis loop for all three of them out of which kinematic is already implemented Takeda and Pivot are uh, currently under development and will be released soon. 
then we have uh, then how to apply these multilinear uh, type model is that while defining the links we need to select the skeleton and none type of interaction and then you can go ahead and select multilinear uh, elastic or multilinear plastic uh, kinematic uh, type of uh, springs and uh, some points to be noted regarding this uh, feature is that for multilinear curve uh, that is uh, that will control the behavior of this uh, uh, of this uh, type of link is uh, is determined by force displacement or deformation relationship and uh, uh, this has been made very easy if you have this sort of information in uh, MS Excel format you can directly copy and paste your values to generate such kind of uh, curves so what are the advantages of uh, this uh, feature so the main advantage is to simulate the foundation behavior considering soil structure interaction with nonlinear springs so let's say uh, consider the scenario where you have a, a single column system or few column system with a few uh, piles underneath it and you want to do a detailed analysis of your uh, foundation so you can apply three dimensional springs you can apply in x y and z directions these nonlinear springs to model the uh, soil structure interaction for piles and each of these springs can be uh, uh, modeled for different soil layers so for the top you can have different behavior uh, middle and then lower layer uh, bottommost layer you have different behavior and the bottom you can have a uh, high uh, stiffness uh, spring to model the tip or the uh, hard rock soil uh, strata so uh, in this way you can uh, approach to a more accurate and detailed analysis for your foundation and come up with the optimal uh, design for your foundation so what will be the uh, benefits of this uh, feature to start with easy data entry from uh, from uh, geotechnical data which is in the form of spreadsheets usually you can directly copy and paste to create such kind of uh, springs in no time and uh, since uh, we can do a non-linear time history analysis with soil structure interaction it is again a very important uh, tool for seismic analysis in uh, uh, high seismic zones then it leads to an accurate assessment of the substructure and hence generates optimal design forces for your piles and uh, pile cap and this uh, together with this feature and the, the previous one which I just shared this makes it a completely uh, one uh, stop solution for super and substructure analysis so this software can serve the needs for your superstructure analysis as it has always been doing but with this enhanced capability of substructure interaction uh, you need not uh, go for your uh, elementary analysis to different type of uh, softwares here and there rather you can do everything in this uh, software package itself now I'll uh, simulate this behavior with the same model but the support is now being replaced with a nonlinear spring and this spring will have uh, the stiffness uh, for now for the time being defined and then you can uh, uh, the basically it's a lollipop model as we call it we have a mass at the top and then stick at the bottom and which is uh, rigidly fixed or has a, a non-linear behavior at its uh, footing so instead of imagining this as a column and then footing you can consider this as a pile spring and you can simulate this pile spring at different intervals along the length of the uh, column or the pile member but just to keep the analysis simple and straightforward I have just applied it at the base of uh, this uh, column or footing or column or column of or pile and upon analysis you can see the cyclic behavior of uh, or the hysteresis loop generated based on El Centrino uh, El Centrocyte excitation so you can uh, generate such kind of uh, uh, hysteresis cycles so let me go into the program itself and open a template file
So in this model, everything else uh, remains, uh, everything is uh, same. You can see the same column, same height, uh, one element, same material properties. And here we have applied two supports. Let me display them. This is a fixed support and this is a, a pin support which uh, not even pin support it's basically it's uh, it doesn't allows rotation about uh, x y or z axis but it allows displacement along x y z axis so uh, this type of support is applied basically what we will be doing is controlling the x y z displacement of this node using the uh, inelastic or nonlinear link so let's uh, get started with that so what I'll do and also um, you would like to see the mass just like the previous model we applied mass at the top of the uh, column this is what we have done here itself so now we'll go to properties and sorry boundaries and select general link properties then I'll click add here and here I'll enter the name Enter the name as nonlinear spring. Oh, by the way, these features are expect them to uh, arrive in uh, civil 2012. So now uh, I'll enter the name as nonlinear spring here and the properties will be something like this. It will be an element type and property type will be spring and under spring we'll have linear uh, stiffness for X, Y and Z which will be 400, 400 and 400. So basically I have just applied identical uh, properties for X, Y and Z direction for the time being to keep uh, this demo or example files very simple. Then I'll go on to Inastic Hinge properties and click add here and enter the name as nonlinear properties and here I'll select spring type skeleton and none and I'll apply X Y and Z directions hysteresis model will be multilinear model and I can select from multilinear elastic or multilinear plastic kinematic so I'll select plastic kinematic here and then click on properties and here I need to enter the data so for this what I'll do is I have this spring data with me in the spreadsheet format. So you can directly copy from here, come into the program and just paste it. So you can see this kind of nonlinear link is created. And another uh, uh, good feature about this uh, software is it automatically com computes the initial stiffness from this nonlinear behavior and enters it here. So you can go ahead and uh, modify uh, whatever uh, uh, displacement and force uh, uh, variables here and then the program will automatically calculate the in initial stiffness and enter it here. Many popular software are not able to do this uh, kind of uh, simple computation and leave it on the user to do it. Then you can click OK to define this spring. I'll repeat this step for the other two springs as well. Paste it, click OK. And OK. So in this manner we have defined this nonlinear property 
I click close here and click OK to generate this spring. And now what I'll do is just go ahead and assign this uh, spring uh, or apply this spring between this fixed support and the base of this column. So I'll go to boundaries and go to general link and I'll select the general link property which is the linear property and also select the inelastic hinge property which is the nonlinear property and here um, I'll apply it as an element and then click uh, between the nodes and the program will generate the link right here and then I'll click close. I've also uh, already applied the eigenvalue analysis as you can see here it is same as uh, similar to the one I defined uh, previously in the previous example and now I'll go ahead and define the time history load cases so I'll click add I'll enter the name as So I'll define basically three load cases here. Case one will be for Rinaldi, nonlinear direct integration. The end time, the record data I have is for it's a 20 seconds. I leave uh, the damping as mass and stiffness proportional and other parameters I'm leaving it, them as default then I'll click apply then next one I'll apply for Giraldo I'll have uh, same uh, variables but the record I have is for about 38 seconds so I'll enter 38 as the end time and the increment step is 0 0.05 and I'll keep uh, the damping method as mass and stiffness proportional and then click apply and the final one I'll apply for El Centro side so I'll enter El Centro and the record, the record is for 54 seconds I'll change the time increment to 0 0.02 and I'll have the damping method as mass and stiffness proportional and then I'll click OK. So I've defined three nonlinear direct integration type of um, time history then I'll click close then right click go to loads and define time forcing functions and uh, here I'll add time functions and in the time functions I'll add the the earthquake records that I have with me so let's start with Rinaldo Rinaldi now I'll show you uh, unlike the previous uh, uh, example where I imported the earthquake uh, record from the database I can also copy and paste the earthquake record from the spreadsheets so here I have the earthquake record with me so I can directly copy the data so I'll copy this and just click here and paste and it will take a while to generate this graph because it's a huge amount of data and as you can see the record is generated now you can enter any description you want otherwise you can just click apply then I'll also add the record for Geraldo Desmond I'll come 
come to the next sheet. I'll go right to the bottom of this. Press Shift. Select this. Copy this. And come here and paste. And again it will take a couple of seconds to generate the graph. So the graph is being generated now and uh, since we had a very uh, big uh, record set with us so therefore it's taking that long. And once this uh, graph is generated then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, define them. Uh, define one more. Let's say El Centro site. And uh, once uh, we have defined that, we'll go ahead and apply uh, them as ground acceleration onto the structure. And just like we did in the last time, we'll generate. Uh, we'll also define some uh, uh, time history result functions that are graphs. And the graphs will be for the link element for the for its uh, displacement and uh, force so that you can see the hysteresis loop formation there. As you can see, this was about uh, 7,566 line uh, table. That's the reason why the program is taking that much time. The previous one was just about uh, 1996 line, so it was generated in no time. And since uh, I'm running several applications simultaneously, it is uh, obviously eating up my RAM, so therefore it is uh, slowing down the process to a further extent. So uh, by the time this is uh, generated, let me see if I can uh, pull out the pull out uh, another model file and uh, continue with the uh, from the modeling from there. So let me just quickly create a copy of my completed model file. And So I can pull out and bring uh, bring this model file where uh, the functions have already been defined. So this is how dense the function is that I was trying to uh, generate. And as you can see, it is a fairly long table. And it's actually 7,757. Uh, uh, 7,756 lines. 
All right. So once we have generated these three uh, time forcing functions, the third being the El Centro side, which we just generated in, uh, just like the previous example. Now I can go ahead, go to load and time forcing function, and then ground acceleration. And here I can select the time history case as Rinaldi and apply Rinaldi along x-axis. Click add, then click close here. Then I repeat this, go to load, then go to time forcing function, uh, sorry, ground acceleration, and select Giraldo with Giraldo Desmond. and click add here sorry click add here And the third one will be El Centro with El Centro H and add here. Close. So we have three uh, sets of uh, ground acceleration defined. And also we'll define the result functions for which uh, we'll select general link deform uh, and force. Then click add new function. And here I'll enter the name as link displacement, let's say for Rinaldi first. DX is the deformation for that link. Rinaldi apply. The next one will be link force for Rinaldi. I node force is just FX and then click apply here and then I'll have link displacement for Giraldo and the X and here I'll choose Giraldo click apply and then link force for Giraldo and I at node force FX click apply and then displacement for El Centro select El Centro apply and the last one is link force for El Centro and I hit node FX and then click OK so we have defined six forces uh, six functions and then we get to the solid view here and then perform the analysis. While the analysis is being performed, let me check if the previous one that we were trying to do has generated the table or not. Oh yes, and as you can see the entire graph is generated. So it takes time if, if, uh, with, if the table is uh, very big. Otherwise it generates in no time. But now I'll continue with that model whose analysis is being performed and you can see the analysis being performed as shown here. So the analysis is performed in less than 50 seconds here and now we'll see the results. So the results can be seen in the same order. You can uh, see the vibration mode shapes to start with. DX and DY direction. You can click on and uh, oh, that's my bad. It's Yeah, you can see the 97% participation in the first and two modes only, first two modes itself.
and now um, we can I'll directly move on to the plot as I can see we are running short of time now so I'll go to time history graph and then I'll plot I'll centro link force on the x-axis and on the y-axis I'll choose L centro uh, link displacement I'll enter the name as L centro number decimals as one one and then I'll plot the graph here so this is the same graph that I just uh, showed in the